of learning about nerves and muscles and I think ever since then I've really been interested in the nervous system and I've worked in lots of different areas of the nervous system but in 2000 I had the opportunity to go to America and work on a project looking at the genetics of anxiety in mice and, and mouse behaviour and ever since then I've just really been interested in how the brain works, how the brain responds to stress and in particular in depression and anxiety. So if I'm interested in studying the brain and there are over a billion brain cells and each brain cell talks to another brain cell so there are probably over a trillion connections in the brain, understanding that can only really be done in a whole behaving organism. So when we think about the brain's response to stress and how we regulate mood, that involves a network of different brain regions. So you really need to be able to study that in a behaving animal. We use mostly mice, uh, mice like these, and we put them into uh, different behavioral situations and we test them and then we can take the brains out of those mice and study the genes and the proteins that are involved in those stress responses. We've already got treatments for depression. Why do we still need to use animals in research into depression? So the, the medicines that we have to treat depression at the moment are not perfect. They work only in about 50% of patients. They can be slow to take effect and they can have some significant side effects um, that puts people off taking them. So we still need new antidepressants. So we're working on a group of receptors in the brain called the opioid receptors. We're interested in targeting those as a new type of antidepressant. So understanding how they function in the brain, how they contribute to the control of mood, requires the use of animals, testing new uh, medicines like new antidepressants can only really be done in animals, both for developing that understanding, but also in terms of developing any new medicine, it has to be tested in an animal before it can be tested in a human, and that's the law. Do animals and humans experience stress and negative emotions differently? And if so, how can animals be used to help with depression in humans? So, depression is often thought of as a uniquely human experience. Um, but depression is a very complex disease with lots of different symptoms. So some of those symptoms, like the loss of interest or pleasure, we can look at in mice. So we can look at how mice change their interest in food or water. We can monitor body weight and see how they respond to stress. But more complicated symptoms around suicidal thoughts, uh, feelings of worthlessness and guilt, you can't ask a mouse how it's feeling. So those are the sort of elements that we can't, we can't really address in animal models. Um, but we use uh, behaviours that put the mice in mildly stressful situations. So one of the ones that we typically use is something called the forced swim test. You put a mouse in a beaker of water. The mouse tries to escape by swimming and climbing activities. When we give mice antidepressants that work in human, they keep trying to escape longer. So we can use these tests as a way of looking at how new antidepressant medication might work.